Dear students, uh, today's class I am going to discuss uh, definite integrals problems based on periodicity. Uh, before going to this, discuss this particular idea, I hope so everyone know about the definition of a periodic function. What is the periodic function? A function f of x is said to be a periodic function if f of x plus t must be equal to f of x. The least positive real number t is called fundamental period of the function. So, you can check sin x, cos x, secant x, cosecant x, these are all periodic functions with period 2 pi, tan x and cot x are periodic functions with period pi and x minus integral part of x is a periodic function with period 1. In all those cases you can check f of x plus 2 pi you will get f of x f of x plus pi you will get f of x f of x plus 1 you will get f of x so f of x plus t is equal to f of x then the function is said to be a periodic function with period t the least positive real number t is called fundamental period of the function now here so if t is the period of a function then nt is also the period of the function t is the fundamental period of the function you see here tan x periodic function with period of pi 2 pi also period 3 pi also period 4 pi also period of the function tan x but t is called fundamental period of the function that's what i am saying if t is the period of a function then nt is also the period of the function then we can write f of x plus nt is equals to f of x so that is about the discussion of periodic function at the same time a function period is t what is geometrical meaning for that that means for every length t units for every length t units the graph repeats you can check the graph of fractional part of x for every one unit length same graph repeats at the same time you can check the graph of tan x for every length pi units the same graph repeats so that's why that is geometrical meaning of period of a function a function period is a t means for every t units length the same graph repeats that is geometrical meaning of a period of a function at the same time one more idea also you have to know you know this is the problem integral a to b f of x dx integral a to b f of x dx we can write it as f of x plus k dx what i have written here wherever x is there in place of x i have written x plus k then immediately we have to subtract k from the limits from upper limit we have to subtract k from lower limit also we have to subtract k next suppose we have integral f of x minus k dx then what to do when place of x we are writing x minus k that's why for upper limit we have to add k for the lower limit also we have to add k for upper limit k addition for lower limit also k addition at the same time i hope so everyone know about this one integral a to b f of x dx we can write it as integral a to c f of x dx plus integral c to b f of x dx where c may or may not lie between a comma b so this is a and this is b c may be here between a comma b c is outside to a comma b c may be here c may be here that's why i am saying c may or may not lie between a comma b we can use this particular property i hope so you are all familiar with this particular ideas then we can discuss a few ideas related to the periodicity of a function by using the definite integrals let us first get the first point is this one integral 0 to nt f of x dx integral 0 to nt f of x dx what we can write this one as 0 to t f of x dx next we can write this one as t to 2t f of x dx next we can write this one as 2t to 3t f of x dx plus and so on plus we can write this one as 
n minus 1 into t to n t f of x dx. So integral 0 to n t f of x dx we can split in this way. Next observe here what I am doing. This can be written as integral 0 to t f of x dx. Next one observe what I am doing. f of x plus t dx. That means in place of x I written x plus t. Whenever x is replaced with x plus t what we have to do? From limits we have to subtract t. Then what happens? 0 to t Next, here f of x plus 2t, then what to do? From limits, we have to subtract 2t, 0 to t, plus and so on, plus. Finally, here also, in place of x, I am writing x plus n minus 1 into t, then what to do? From limits, we have to subtract n minus 1 into t, that becomes 0 to t. As you know, f of x is a periodic function, then f of x plus t is equal to f of x. f of x plus nt also f of x. So that's why what happens? f of x plus t is equal to f of x only. f of x plus 2t is equal to f of x only. f of x plus n minus 1 into t also f of x. Then what happens? The same term, that means we will get here integral 0 to t f of x to dx. Next also, integral 0 to t f of x dx. Next also, integral 0 to t f of x dx. The same finally also you will get integral 0 to t f of x dx. Now, the same integral is there how many times? n times. That's why we can write this one as n times integral 0 to t f of x dx. Right? So, this is one property based on periodicity of a function. So next one we can discuss the another property here integral m t to n t f of x dx. Integral m t to n t f of x dx. What we can write this one. Observe here what I am doing. Integral f of x plus m t dx. What I did? In place of x I written x plus mt. Whenever in place of x we are writing x plus mt, then what we have to do? From lower limit we have to subtract mt. From upper limit also we have to subtract mt. That's why 0 upper limit is becoming nt minus mt. That's why n minus m into t. Just now we discussed this particular property. We can write this one as n minus m into integral 0 to t f of x plus m t dx. Now again, according to the definition of a periodic function, f of x plus m t we can write f of x. That's why this we can write it as n minus m into integral 0 to t f of x dx. Right? So another one we can discuss like this. This is the third one I can say. Integral a plus nt to b plus nt f of x dx. Come on. What we can write? Same thing. This I can write it as integral f of x plus nt dx. That means in place of x I am writing x plus nt. Then what we have to do? nt we have to subtract from the lower limit. nt we have to subtract from the upper limit. Then it becomes a to b f of x plus nt dx. Now f of x plus nt according to the definition of a periodic function. f of x plus nt we can write it as f of x. So it becomes integral a to b f of x dx. Right? So another property here I am discussing. This is given in this way. Integral a to a plus nt f of x dx. Integral a to a plus nt f of x dx, how can we write? Observe here, this we can write it as integral a to 0 f of x dx. Next one is integral 0 to nt f of x dx plus again nt to a plus nt f of x dx. I hope so everyone followed this one. What I did, suppose here a is there, somewhere here a plus nt is there, in the middle 0 is there, right? Next, 
N T is there. After that, A plus N T is there. So A two A plus N T. I written as A two zero zero to N T N T two A plus N T. That is the way I split the given integral. Now what happens? So don't disturb this one. We can write this one as A two zero f of x dx. Next, what we can write? This we can write it as n times integral zero to t f of x dx plus what I am doing. Observe here. In place of x, I am writing x plus n t. Come on, what we all write? In place of x, I am writing x plus n t. From lower limit, we have to subtract n t. From upper limit, also we have to subtract n t. Then it becomes zero to a f of x plus n t. Now this we can write it as a to zero f of x dx plus n times integral zero to t f of x dx plus according to the definition of a periodic function f of x plus n t we can write it as f of x then becomes integral zero to a f of x dx. Can you say this integral this integral cancel? Because here a to zero, but here it is zero to a. If you want to interchange the limits, minus you will get minus term plus term cancel. That's why we are getting that is equals to n times integral zero to t f of x dx. We can write integral a to a plus n t f of x dx, right? So let's discuss a few applications based on uh, this particular uh, properties. This is the first question given: integral a uh, zero to hundred pi. Square root of one plus cos two x dx. The basic information which we have to know here is f of x is equal to mod cos x. f of x is equal to mod cos x is a periodic function with a period of pi. It's a periodic function with a period pi. You can check f of x plus pi cos of x plus pi cos one eighty plus theta. You will get minus cos theta because in modulus. That's why you will get mod cos x only. That's why mod cos x and mod sin x. These are periodic functions with the period of pi. Now, can you even say what is the period of mod cos x plus mod sin x? Yes, mod cos x plus mod sin x is a periodic function with the period pi by two. Yes, you can check in place of x if you substitute pi by two. Yeah, of x plus pi by two is equal to cos 90 plus theta minus sin theta modulus is there. Sin 90 plus theta cos theta same. Both same function we are getting. So mod cos x is a periodic function with the period of pi. Mod sin x is a periodic function with the period of pi. Sin x and cos x are periodic functions with the period of two pi. Whereas mod sin x plus mod cos x is a periodic function with the period pi by two. So you know this information. Based on this information, we are going to do this particular question. I can write this one as integral as zero to hundred of pi. Right? You know one plus cos two x formula is root two outside modulus of cos x dx. Yes or no? Because one plus cos two x we can write it as two times cos square x. Root of x square we have to write mod x. That's why root of cos square x are done as mod cos x. Now it is a periodic function with the period pi. That's why we can write this one as hundred into root two into integral zero to pi modulus of cos x dx. Yes. Now what I am doing? Observe here. Multiply with the two. Divide with the two. According to the property zero to two a property. Zero to two a condition satisfies. And this is the property integral zero to two a f of x dx. We can write it as. Two times integral zero to a f of x dx under the condition f of two a minus x is equal to f of x. That's why this we can write it as two into hundred into root two into integral zero to pi by two cos x dx. I am not writing modulus because between zero to pi by two cos x is positive. That's why mod cos x I written cos x only. Now you know this is equals to 200 into root 2 into cos x integration is sin x. We have to apply the limits from 0 to pi by 2. That is equals to 1. You will get. That's why 200 into root 2 is the answer. So we have another question in this way. The another question is given like this: 0 to 1000 e power x minus integral part of x dx. 
I hope so everyone know x minus integral part of x x minus integral part of x is nothing but fractional part of x fractional part of x is a periodic function fractional part of x is a periodic function with period 1 that's why you can write this one as 1000 into integral 0 to 1 e power x minus integral part of x dx or a 0 to 1 what about integral part of x 0 0 to 1 integral part of x is becoming 0 that's why we can write this one as 1000 into integral 0 to 1 e to the power of x dx what is e power x integration e power x integration is e power x limits are from 0 to 1 that's why you get the answer as 1000 into e minus 1 at the same time let's say another question here limits from minus pi to 199 pi root of 1 minus cos 2x divided by 2 right so limits from minus pi to 199 pi root of 1 minus cos 2x divided by 2 1 minus cos 2x you know 2 sin square x 2 2 cancel that's why we are getting there minus pi to 199 pi modulus of sin x you know sin x is a mod sin x is a periodic function with a period of pi that's why we can write this one as 199 minus minus 1 into limits from 0 to pi modulus of sin x dx that's what we discussed earlier mt to nt mt to nt we can write this one mt to nt f of x dx if this function is a periodic function with period t then we can write it as n minus m into integral 0 to t f of x dx that's what i applied here that's why what we will get here this is equal to 200 into integral 0 to pi are a mod sin x between 0 to pi first and second quadrant sin is positive that's why mod sin x becomes sin x only right now you can apply the limits sin x integration minus cos x upper limit minus lower limit you will get the answer let us see another question is given like this the question is given in this way integral minus 5 to plus 5 minimum of minimum of fractional part of x plus 2 comma fractional part of x minus 2 dx fractional part of x plus 2 fractional part of x minus 2 among these two minimum we have to find out yes if you know this particular information first of all what is the fractional part of x fractional part of x is equal to x minus integral part of x the next information you have to know is integral part of x plus k we can write it as integral part of x plus k if you know this information the problem is over Fractional part of x plus 2 is equal to fractional part of x only. Fractional part of x minus 2 also equal to fractional part of x only. Based on this information, right? That means both are same and equal to. That means fractional part of x plus 2 is the same as fractional part of x minus 2 is equal to fractional part of x. Fractional part of x plus 2 is equal to x. Fractional part of x minus 2 is also equal to x. Fractional part of x. That's why we can write this one as that means minimum of fractional part of x comma fractional part of x means fractional part of x only. That's why minus 5 to 5 fractional part of a x dx. Now you know fractional part of x is a periodic function with the period 1. That's why we can write 5 minus minus 5 m minus m into integral 0 to 1 fractional part of x dx. That is equals to 10 into integral 0 to 1 x minus integral part of x dx. That is the definition of fractional part of x. But between 0 to 1 integral part of x is becoming 0. That's why you will get 10 into x integration is x square by 2 limits are from 0 to 1. So that is equals to 10 into 1 by 2. So we are getting the answer as 5. Okay. So that is the a few questions discussion based on periodicity of a function. More we will discuss in the next class. Right.